Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Mindy here. I hope you had an amazing weekend and you've started this week on a great note. Today I'm going to do a This Not That Epic Fragrance Battle video. I love watching these so, so much. I think they're fantastic for somebody who's trying to decide between two different fragrances that they like, or they're trying to discern between a couple different fragrances that are oftenly compared to one another. So if that interests you, please stay tuned and let's get started. The first two fragrances that I'm going to compare today are Seductive Noir by Guess and Mon Guerlain by the Guerlain brand. Now I do have a couple full bottles of Mon Guerlain. I have the Sensual and I have the Intense version. But from what I can tell, it seems like this is most commonly referred to Mon Guerlain, so I thought that would be a great place to start today in my comparisons. I'm going to go ahead and spray Mon Guerlain on my skin to remind myself of what it smells like. This is a gorgeous scent. It's a classy scent. This is a perfume that I find to be cozy. I find it to be alluring. There's lavender, there's Tahitian vanilla. There's a series of scents that make this so gorgeous. Mon Guerlain is a fragrance that I find to be signature scent worthy. I find it to be an amazing fragrance to choose from for a wedding day. I think it's a type of fragrance that you could gift to a mom and she will smell lovely. I find it to be very versatile, an all around scent that whoever wears it is gonna smell beautiful, they're gonna smell lovely. Seductive Noir smells surprisingly similar to Mon Guerlain to me. It does not have a lot of the same notes. So in Seductive Noir you have sage, bergamot, peony, iris, jasmine, sandback, lily of the valley, there's vanilla, Haitian vetiver, and velvet, and really not a lot of overlap between the two fragrances. The name Seductive Noir is really the perfect name for this fragrance. I do find it to be alluring, it's seductive, it is an intoxicating type fragrance, as is Mon Guerlain. Now when I compare these two fragrances side by side, Seductive Noir to Mon Guerlain, I do feel like I gravitate a little bit more towards the Seductive Noir side. Now I'm wondering if that's because there's something in the Seductive Noir side that I don't pick up here. I don't know if it's the lavender. This has sage, this has lavender, so there's almost like a masculine type quality, but I feel like they're both feminine perfumes. This one does have licorice, and when I sniff it, I'm sort of wondering if that's the one note in here that I'm slightly put off by in comparing the two. I'm not really sure, I can't put my finger on it, but there's something in here that is making me less likely to reach for this one over the Seductive Noir. The one thing I find about Seductive Noir is that it does seem to lack in longevity on my skin. This is a very affordable fragrance, it's around the $20, $25 price point or so, so I don't mind doing a midday spray, but somebody who has a problem with longevity may be frustrated with this one. That being said, I did mention that in a prior video where I spoke about this in a perfume haul, and a subscriber did say that they thought this had excellent longevity. So it may be the type of fragrance that I go a little bit nose blind to after a while. It just seems to be one to me that becomes a little bit more subtle. And I still feel that way. I put these on my skin earlier today. When I compared them side by side about a half an hour ago, the Monger Lawn did seem to be just a little bit more intense. Now one thing about Seductive Noir is that in reading reviews, I did happen to notice that some people were picking up an aftershave smell here, and I wonder if that's the sage that they're picking up in this fragrance. I don't necessarily pick that up. I think it smells lovely, but I could see how people would find that in this fragrance, so if you think that would be problematic for you, maybe this is one to try before you buy, or maybe Mon Guerlain would be a better option for you. I personally find Seductive Noir to be quite similar to Mon Guerlain Sensuelle, maybe a little bit more so than the original Mon Guerlain. All three are fantastic fragrances. But because I gravitate towards Seductive Noir just a little bit more than Mon Guerlain when I compare them side by side, I'm going to go ahead and name the winner of this epic fragrance showdown to be Seductive Noir by Guess. The next two fragrances that I want to compare side by side in this epic fragrance showdown is Outremer Vini and Cherosa 71 Brazilian Crush by Sol de Janeiro. Now I like both of these fragrances and I don't exactly think they smell that much alike, 
but I did see when I was reading reviews about this one that some people thought that Outremer Vini was similar. I thought this would be a fun chance to compare two fragrances that are quite affordable around that $20 price range or so and let you know my thoughts on which one I prefer. Now I find these both to be delicious gourmands. Now Tremor Vini is much more centric on that vanilla note, whereas Charosa 71 has a little bit more dimension to it, just a little bit more going on in the notes profile. When I think about Outremer Vini, there's really only two listed notes with this fragrance, vanilla and cotton candy. And you definitely get vanilla from this fragrance. And if you want a sort of basic, it's not basic, but if you want sort of a vanilla centric fragrance that is low price, this is an amazing one to check out. Some people mention that they really pick up on that cotton candy note. I pick up on it but it's not as heavy or as noticeable as it is in some other fragrances. So fragrances that come to mind that have a very prominent cotton candy note to me are Ari by Ariana Grande, Love Don't Be Shy by Killian, or Princess by Killian. This doesn't have as much of a noticeable cotton candy note to me. More so, it's just very, very vanilla centric. And if that's what you're going for, fantastic fragrance. Brazilian Crush Charosa 71, on the other hand, has more dimension, a little bit more character as I mentioned before. Different people pick up different things from this fragrance. I definitely get a little bit of that macadamia nut and white chocolate. I find it to be a very nutty fragrance. And on top of that, I get almost like that buttery popcorn vibe, maybe from the salt that's in this fragrance. But again, there's a delicious sweetness here. Some people say that they get s'mores from this one, and I agree. There's caramel, there's chocolate, there's macadamia, actually white chocolate, sea salt, coconut nectar, just a beautiful composition of notes here. And again, it's very, very sweet. If you have an issue with overly sweet fragrances, I don't think either one of these will be for you. These are more geared towards the true gourmand lover, which I happen to be. But when I compare them side by side, and if I had to pick the fragrance that I prefer between these two, I would have to say it's Brazilian Crush Churosa 71. This is just the quintessential gourmand. It's delicious, it's warm. This will work in all months, really. I think it's quite versatile, but I think in the winter months, I'll really wanna reach for this because of that warm, cozy, nutty feeling that you get from it. So for that reason, in this epic fragrance showdown, the winner is gonna be Brazilian Crush Charosa 71. El Tremor Vini is a fantastic fragrance if you're looking for something very vanilla centric. If you're looking for something along the lines of Vini West Indies, this is great. But again, I have to go with this one, a gorgeous fragrance. So I saw a wonderful review recently by Jack's Beautiful You. I'll link her channel below the other day. And I really enjoyed watching her talk about Flower Bomb Nectar. This is a fragrance that I've wanted to add to my collection for a while. I just haven't been able to prioritize it, but I do really like Flower Bomb Nectar. I wanted to compare it side by side against Flower Bomb and let you know which of these two I prefer. Now, Flower Bomb is always going to have a place in my collection in some way, shape, or form. I know they have the Dew, the Midnight, the Nectar, the original EDP. I'm interested to see as time goes by if they introduce other versions or flankers of this fragrance, but I do really like both of these. Flower Bomb to me is multidimensional. Again, I feel like if I would have heard that name years ago, I would have been put off by the fact that it sounded so flower centric, and it is. There are a lot of florals in this fragrance. There's orchid, jasmine, rose, African orange flower, and freesia as well, which kind of gives it this refreshing vibe to it. But all of those florals are balanced out by the vanilla, the musk, the patchouli, and they really round this out to make it a gorgeous smelling floral fragrance. 
Flower Bomb Nectar, on the other hand, is a little bit more heavily weighted towards a gourmand lover. So this fragrance actually has gunpowder, cassis, bergamot, osmanthus, orange blossom, jasmine sandbag, so a lot of those florals as well. And it has vanilla, tonka bean, benzoin, and patchouli. This really is just a fantastic gourmand spin on the original Flower Bomb. This is a sweeter fragrance and I really love the added dimension that gunpowder gives this one. So when I looked up the gunpowder note, I was curious on exactly how they describe that in Fragrantica. And the description of the odor profile is fantasy note with peppery, sulfurous, and pyrocaustic firecracker facets. Definitely relate to that firecracker comment. In fact, when I think about, you know, around the 4th of July when we're playing with sparklers or you're playing with fireworks that don't leave the ground, of course, um, it definitely reminds me of a little bit of what you pick up in here, and I really like that about it. It adds dimension, it adds character, and it makes this a really fun take on the original Flower Bomb. Now, as I mentioned, I'll always have Flower Bomb in some way, shape, or form in my collection. And I'm not going through this one very quickly because while I like it, and I think it's an excellent everyday scent, it could very easily be someone's signature scent because it's that pretty. It doesn't really have the gourmand qualities that I often crave in my fragrances, and Flower Bomb Nectar tends to fill that gap a little bit more. So yes, I do think in this epic fragrance showdown that the winner for this round will be Flower Bomb Nectar. Just a gorgeous all-around scent, fantastic for a gourmand lover, with some added character from that gunpowder note. Again, the winner is Flower Bomb Nectar for this round. All right, next up, usually when I do a side-by-side -side, this, not that epic fragrance battle video, it's usually comparing two fragrances that are often compared to one another. In this case, I'm gonna take two fragrances that sort of remind me of one another. They are gorgeous, they are beautiful, and they are intoxicating fragrances that I've spoken a lot about recently. That's because I have fallen madly in love with both of these perfumes. The first is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense, and the other is Tribeca by Bond Number no. 9. Sadly, I only have a sample of Tribeca, and it is going quickly because I am using this up. I love this fragrance. Now, while these fragrances aren't really the same, the only one intense is an amber floral, whereas Tribeca is an amber vanilla fragrance. I do find that they have some similar qualities between one another. Both of them have sort of a strong white floral presence to me, but they're both combined with some gourmand notes that make them incredibly appealing to my nose. For the only one intense, the gourmand notes that I pick up on are the vanilla, the coconut, there's also green apple in this one, and it just makes the composition so incredibly beautiful for this fragrance that I can't get enough of it. And Tribeca is similar in that way. So the white floral in here is jasmine sandback. There's a cedar note also. There's ambroxan. But the gourmand notes that really wrote me in here are the cacao, the hazelnut, and caramel. Both of these are creamy, delicious, floral fragrances that just have that warm, cozy gourmand aspect that I love, love, love in a fragrance. I will say, when I very first tried Tribeca, I was slightly put off by the heaviness of the floral aspect in this perfume. I thought it was a little bit overpowering at first. I thought it was a little heavy, but it dissipates and just becomes this elegant, gorgeous, sophisticated composition. And really, between both of these, I find them to be classy. I find them both to be sophisticated. These are the type of fragrances that also can be worn in multiple occasions. When I think about a wedding day, either one of these would be gorgeous. When I think about a date night out, either one of these would be gorgeous. When I think about an office setting, both of these are gorgeous. So they're really versatile, beautiful, alluring scents that work in many, many different circumstances. 
Now, really the glaringly obvious difference between these two to me and what I've really been focusing on here is the price point. Yes, the notes are different. They really don't have a lot of the same notes. They don't smell the same. They just have similar qualities that wrote me into the perfume. But the price point on this one is dramatically higher than that of Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense. And so if I were going off of price alone, there is no question that the only one intense would win fantastic fragrance and I do think that it is a bargain for what you get. This is a sizable bottle, one that will last me quite a while, and one that I love to reach for. But if I'm taking price out of the equation, I find Tribeca to be just an exquisite fragrance. Both of these are sneaking their way probably into my top 10 or top 15 fragrances at this point. I adore each one of these and I think they're gorgeous. This is really hard and I'm not sure that I can walk away with a winner between the two. If I had to pick which one I'm reaching for lately the most, it's Tribeca, but that's only because I recently received the sample and I am obsessing over it lately. For this epic fragrance showdown, I am actually going to call this one a tie. I love both of these fragrances. I hate that it leaves you guys with no closure on this battle, but really I do think these are fantastic for somebody who likes gourmand fragrances, but they also like that floral aspect in their perfumes. Both of these are stunning. I cannot wait to get a full bottle form of this fragrance in my collection, but in the meantime, both are fantastic. Again, that is The Only One Intense by Dolce & Gabbana and Tribeca by Bond Number no. 9. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I truly appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed this epic fragrance showdown, this battle of side-by-side -side comparisons of two fragrances. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and you have a lot to be grateful and thankful for. Until next time, I'll see you soon.